Are we on sound? This is a frame I'm making for the pickled egg paintings. Pickled eggs, pickled onions, pickled gherkins. I just love the process of painting. I love paint. I love manipulating it and sometimes it's a bit unpredictable, which I like. Uh, it's a game really, you and the paint. When I was um, at school, I was having a terrible time at school trying to write left-handed with a dip pen which was always stabbing the paper and making blots and smudging and so on. Anyway, uh, at some point, I must have been about eight or something like that, there was a television program, children's television program, and the host was Edmundo Ross. And he invited children to put in a, a painting, submit a painting for a competition. And I painted a picture of a parrot. And the parrot got on the television. And I thought, this is rather good, yeah, I don't, if you're an artist, you don't have to write and you don't have to add up. It's, it's pretty easy, you just paint pictures. So I think that, that's when it uh, first germinated. Lovely, I know, that's what drew me. When I first went as a fine art student at, at the art school, I was a first year, I sneaked up into the painting studio of the fourth years or third years, and I smelt that. Genuine Terps are oh, wonderful, and it just it just got me. I was hooked. Moved up to Birmingham when I left college. There was a job going at Birmingham Repertory Theatre as a scenic artist, so I applied for that, got that. And what was wonderful was a huge paint shop, what they call the paint shop where the scenery is painted. And of course, all the materials were free: brushes, paint. Carpenter downstairs that would make up stretchers. There was off cuts of canvas, so I could carry on painting up there without any pressure. And the director at the time asked me, "Would I like to design a set?" So I said, "Yes." I'd never designed a set in my life, but it was a great opportunity. So I started to design sets and did a number of productions. Again, I got itchy feet after a couple of years and moved to London, got a place at Clapham Common where I lived and uh, managed to find a job at Covent Garden at the Opera House <clears throat> through the grapevine this was. That was fantastic again, it was, uh, the scale was so different from the rep, a huge stage, it was like a football pitch and wonderful mix of people, interaction of dancers, opera singers, barrow boys, hustle and bustle, absolutely packed out with fruit and veg and pubs and calves and it was it was just a, a marvellous place to be in the, what was it, late 60s. I'm always a bit scared of bright colour initially, more of a tonal painter. When, when I first went to Thames Television, it was in the days of black and white TV and all the backdrops and backcloths and scenic painting was done in monochrome. It's all greys, it's no colour. So it <coughs> wasn't long before we went into colour television. Thames Television, based at Teddington Lock, were looking for scenic artists, designers, quite a lot of production people, because it was expanding. And so I moved to Thames Television. The detail of things had to be spot on, the perspective, you know, 40 foot cloths of the City of London and quite complicated bits of painting. Because I, I, I'd done quite a lot of portraits of actors in costume or ancestors, you know, for various dramas, one or two of the, well, started with one art director wanted me to paint their family. So I did these, started doing these big conversation pieces, about four foot square they were, and from that then Someone else would want one. Oh, I've seen that painting of Fred and his family. And I got into this sort of role of being the portrait painter. 
And I, I did do a lot of work outside of the day-to-day -day scenic work. Only one thing is true, to paint directly what you see. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Do it again. And all the rest is humbug. That Manet said that. <laughs> I, I'm very um, conscious and aware on the surface of the paint when it's applied. It's like the handwriting. It's part of the person when you're operating a paintbrush like handwriting, you know. So that's going to go lighter. That'll probably go a bit lighter. I love Bologna very much. I like the architecture. Well, it's very unspoilt. People are lovely. This one I'm working from a, a drawing I did whilst sipping a coffee across the street. I quite like in compositions, I quite like the mix of rectangles, squares and circles when I'm painting. There was a bit of bright green graffiti here, which I did a, I, I drew the shape of. I don't know what it says, but I want that bright green bit in there at some point when I, in fact, I might, I might put a bit of that in now, just to, I like that texture, just to see what it looks like. Something like that, even brighter. I, think. I do like to see the artist's kind of brush strokes because it's when I look at a painting, you look at a Rembrandt or something, Goya, you know, you, you can get inside the man's head when you see how he's putting the paint on. This underlying texture that I've put down, very thin, <clears throat> I'm trying to leave some of that under here, even the grain of the canvas which is important when I stretch a canvas, I don't brush it on, I shave it on with a piece of card so it fills a bit more of the, the tooth of the cloth. If, I've got a, if I'm working on top of a thin layer of paint, which is dry of course, I'll maybe come back with a knife and sort of drag it across. I don't want it all the same texture, so I, I run out of paint, then I mix another lot, which will be slightly different, so the whole thing becomes a little bit richer around here and on this sort of, it just suits this subject matter you know, for that uh, Italian kind of plaster work. You open the doors, pub you haven't been into, it's like curtain up. What's the set like? You know, you're looking at the lighting, the architecture, the lovely craftsmanship, maybe of a mahogany or a Victorian or Edwardian bar, cut glass and so on then I, I would probably find the, a corner I can lose myself in and be anonymous. So I'd, I'd use a little sketchbook or even the newspaper and, and make some notes, draw. It's like a play going on, you know, all the customers of the cast. Uh, and I find this fascinating, all this interaction, and the comedy and the tragedy, if you like. These sort of characters are the people you, you now or used to see in pubs probably on their own. These two, these two chaps, these two characters were having a good moan about Brexit, I believe, before Brexit, should we or shouldn't we? I worry where these people are going to go when all this sort of institution of local pubs disappear, which I've got a horrible feeling they will. I do like to dictate the whole job, the frame, and the way a picture is mounted and displayed. So I just enjoy making frames. I find quite a lot of framers now, they're not, they haven't got their, their eye tuned into the artwork. You know, they, they upstage the painting or, so I, I like to be in charge of that. I'd left Thames, I'd been at London Weekend Television, done a bit there. I was getting work from Shepton Studios and film work, but the traveling was getting ridiculous. I couldn't take it. So I had to find some, something else. And I happened to be commuting to London one day on the train and there was a copy of The Guardian on the seat next to me. And in there was 
uh, lecturer needed at Colchester School of Art. I thought, blimey, that's where I went. Oh, that's close to home, yes. Oh, I've never thought of teaching. Oh, what the hell can I talk about? And I thought, well, I've got a lot of practical experience in the applied arts, if you like. So I applied for the job and uh, managed to get it. What I do sometimes with um, a painting that's got uh, quite a lot of crucial shapes in, in the right place, and I'm going to be painting over lots of bits all the time, and something as crucial as like the perspective of that work on the road, you know. I make what they call a pounce. I'll do the drawing. I have a wheel. You make the holes in the paper full of French chalk or charcoal. Rub it across where you've made all the pin pricks. So you can always get, I can always get the drawing back again. I like paintings to perhaps amuse people. Or, uh, I mean, I take the painting seriously, but I don't take myself very seriously. I just like uh, to add or interject something of humour into a painting occasionally. lockdown I've been doing painting some still life which isn't really me but I like the idea of pickled eggs being associated with pubs and pub fare in the olden days but the thing is as I go on with these pickled egg paintings I sometimes eat one so the jar's going down so I'm gonna have to get some more pickled eggs now I've got a few I can get a couple of paintings out of that <laughs> If I wasn't getting out and about, which I haven't been in lockdown, wandering around the streets, it's uh, kind of supplemented not being able to do that. So uh, I, I'm quite, you know, I think I'll do some more. My pickled gherkins come next. Pickled onions. Pickled beetroot. Yeah.